Well, here's the first of our sub-Christmas specials. I fully acknowledge that there are problems with the Granito Superdome Theory Carnivorous plants to a certain extent. Uh, for example, the first thing they say is, you know, <coughs> uh, there's not much copper in uh, serpentine, which is true, uh, whereas, you know, the highest mineral element in most sphagnum peats is copper, and also then we have the, the, the problem that CPs aren't, don't seem to like copper. But the alternative, uh, so, so, you know, blue, blue stone copper sulfate sort of thing, yeah, this stuff, copper sulfate, copper, copper in its two state. We have in this container here a known quantity of uh, copper sulfate, copper two sulfate. In this one we have a known quantity of cobalt, uh, cobalt, cobalt chloride. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll probably in the next one I'll, I'll open up the book and we'll get a, a listing I should have done it before I started the camera up, but early on in the book they talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, levels and things like that. Uh, if I can find it, yes, here we go, somewhere along here. Levels, nickel and uh, chromium and cobalt sort of thing in these tables and things like that. And uh, yeah, give various locations and rocks if I can find them. Uh, things like that, I don't know if the camera's going to actually whether you can actually pause the YouTube thing or whatever, I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, in listings of countries and things and the amount, and you can see there's cobalt is there, uh, nickel, uh, but there's no no listing for copper there, you see. And I always say, well, that's the problem, you know, because um, Australia has had the biggest copper mine that ever existed in the, in the world, but they're also counting table of elements there with various rocks and things like that, ultramafic ba uh, basalts, granite sh shales, sandstones and carbonates with various other things. You'll notice there's not much copper there at all really compared to uh, the other ones, the, uh, where to uh, uh, cobalt and chromium and things like that you know it's like a fifteenth so copper is about like a fifteenth of cobalt so cobalt's about ten times higher than the copper in so point one, there's not much copper in serpentine, and then cobalt is about, oh, I would say about 10 to 15 times higher. Let's see, yeah, yeah. on average, yeah, two to five to 15 times, so uh, yeah, so looking at that. So uh, anyway, we'll get more into that later on, but uh, the other thing is in Western Australia, the, the last slabs of serpentine, the rivers in Western Australia, of course, flow to the ocean. Whereas in Australia, we, we're, we're a very unusual continent. Um, that uh, on the uh, east coast, central, central to east coast, the rivers flow inland, which is unusual. So, have you noticed as you go from the west to the east, there are fewer CPs, but the, the CPs return uh, on the um, seaward sides of the, of the Blue Mountains, as far as I know. Uh, where, where the where the rivers actually again flow to the ocean again, so uh, and also on the Western Australia side, when they flow off uh, to the ocean from the serpentine areas, you'll notice you get your stromatolites, the um, organisms that like to accumulate manganese. So it's uh, quite a high manganese in the serpentine, because back in the old days when I was uh, first first starting to do the um, the plant near mineral nutrients, they used to have this concept of iron, of two forms of iron. And the second form of iron turned out to be manganese. So some, so some organisms like uh, cyanophytes and things like that like to accumulate manganese. It's like a, a, a secondary form of iron. But why is that, you see? Is there a deeper understanding of why they, they prefer manganese? So, why they prefer... I can find this very quickly. If they prefer manganese, this sort of pink one, notice the cobalt is a sort of pinky red colour too. Is there a relationship between colour and valency? There usually is. Because people at, uh, at school used to wonder how I could do so well in chemistry. And I, I looked at them with a very strange face. Can't you see the colours? It's, it's a colour system. You know, certain elements can only have certain colours. So if you've got the, yeah, this, the, uh, the, the reactants in, a, in an equation and then you've got the products, you can only have certain, you know, start off with certain colours, you can only end up with certain colours. And, and I, I just looked at them down, down, dumbfoundedly that they hadn't played around enough with the, uh, you know, with their basic chemistry sets to realise is that you can look at, view it as a coloured system. 
You start off with you know, coloured reactants, you end up with coloured products. And they can only go to certain colours. You can, you can get unusual things like really high temperature forms of zinc oxide, which is yellow, but most zinc salts are white. Most zinc salts are ten times more soluble than all the other transition element uh, um, salts and salts in general sort of thing. So, you know, most salts have a certain density, you know, per cubic volume and things like that, you know, all these sort of basic things. So when you stumble across something, it will stand, stand out like a sore thumb. And you've got things like nickel sulfate, you know. You've got, you've got this sort of glaucous blue and you can get to the, the nice lime green sort of thing when you get to the, um, the chloride sort of thing. It's a coloured system. So I, I started off uh, years ago with this idea that, you know, maybe the plants were using alternative elements that didn't react so much, were, were quite stable over a wide pH range, and, um, you know, uh, like nickel and, and, and cobalt was the one that sort of stood out like a sore thumb. It didn't, you know, it was stable over a wide pH range sort of thing. Uh, you know, uh, it didn't fall out as the, you know, the, the carbonates, the hydroxides and things like that, like most of the other things do. Uh, you know, because, like, nickel's very stable. It doesn't fall out as a, you know, hydroxide carbonate very easily. It's, it's stable in, a, in, in aqueous solution over a wide pH range. So what was wrong with cobalt? I think we've discovered the relationship between serpentine and, and, the, and the difference between copper and cobalt. I'll show you this with our polystyrene. Now I've washed these out, I, I've, I've done a, um, uh, a 12 flush, you know, which is like a, a 5,640, uh, don't quote me on that, you can do cal uh, serial dilution, so basically no smell, so your nose is supposedly as good as a, um, a gas chromatograph sort of thing, so you've got as much as you can get out of there, you've got rid of all the orange oils, the clove oils and all the other stuff they put in these things if you've done a, a 12 flush sort of thing, as best you can, you know, on a regular basis. Put, put, put in all these polystyrene pieces, about, uh, this one was uh, 300 365 so far to get that, so it's a lot more um, quarter inch pieces to fill up one of these than it is a 240 milk bottle sort of thing. But now we're going to add, this is very cheap ammonia, basically around about a dollar fifty. Very cheap, but very powerful. Now we should be able to take this, and you know, you've done this in high school. And we should be able to fill, fill this up, and we should see an amazing thing happen. So it's a very small amount of copper. Goes a long way. If we can see this happening, I don't know if we can see this happening. We can pull this in, and now. We only need, not so much, we don't need like two litres of ammonia because we've got so much polystyrene that easy. So we can basically almost fill one litre. So basically what that's telling you, if you've got like a 2.4 litre container there, well this is supposed to be a two litre container according to the label, uh, and this is a one litre bottle of ammonia, you've basically got one uh, litre's void space of the polystyrene. And people are saying, oh well it's, it's, the, it's the air trapped in all the polystyrene just coming out. And I'm saying, well, how come it only comes out during the day, for a start? And if you go online, labelled of course, so we don't get them confused. Now, if we do this up and down, we get this lovely blue colour. And slowly, I should have actually left some space and done the shaking first, but you know, you make these mistakes when, you, when you're gabbing on, like I do. But there's a lot to impart. You know, for our Christmas, one of our Christmas specials sort of thing. Now the question is, are we actually going to get gas, once this is all settled down, we got rid of the air and everything, is, there, is this actually going to generate any, any um, reductive flammable gas or is it just going to go absolutely dead? And that tells you that's part of the thing, you don't actually get, are we going to find out we get no reductive flammable gas occurring from the polystyrene when the copper has reacted with the ammonia? Get it? So if you've got some sort of nitrogen source that's breaking down, that's why the plants don't like the nitrogen. It's not that they don't like the nitrogen, it, it forms ammonia first before it goes to nitrate, reacts with the copper, forms something that stops the reductive flammable gas, and therefore you don't get any of the things that require the reductive flammable gas. No, you know, probably no cyanophyta, other forms of algae, and then, then you don't get anything that lives on the algae or the cyanophyta, like you've got a rhodophyta or something, you know, a red algae or something that eats the um, 
the algae or something like that. Well, they can't grow because the algae's not growing. The algae's not growing because you've got no reductive, reductive flammable gas and things like that. So you've got this cascade. So a little bit of copper can make a whole cascade of problems. Okay. <laughs> I want to know. So that's probably why CPs don't like copper. But this could be a problem with uh, the serpentine argument. Do we get the same the same problem with the cobalt? Are we going to actually have the same sort of another colored reaction? And we're going to have an, the same sort of problem where we don't generate any reductive flammable gas from the polystyrene because we formed a complex, uh, and it's a very stable complex that's impervious to um, salt to a certain extent. Now co copper will react with salt, but when it's in this form it doesn't reduce down too well and you have to get it really 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 acid to get it sort of thing so is that an explanation for why CP is like really acid conditions because that's one way out and then you've got to ask yourself how do you get into those acid conditions sort of thing but anyway <laughs> when, when you're bubbling off all this reductive flammable gas you're losing your capacity to make acidity aren't you <laughs> is that why CP areas die out eventually you know when they lose the uh, the ability to be acidic any longer. Anyway, I just thought uh, we'd do that, and you know, I don't know if the camera's catching any of that at all, but we'll see. And in the next video, we'll, we'll do the cobalt one. Okay, and eventually, we may get on to doing uh, iron, you know, get the camera to work. So, uh, and we might do nickel one, and then we'll start doing other one we'll do it again but we'll add our popcorn and our a certain quantity of um, phosphorus of course now this is a known quantity of copper of course it has a ratio with the phosphorus you see and it also has a relationship with nickel as well and I thought the relationship to nickel and copper was just too good but the, the standout <sighs> niggling problem was the cobalt couldn't explain the, co uh, the cobalt problem but maybe I can explain the uh, the cobalt problem now when we add the ammonia and the polystyrene. The polystyrene will be an indicator or an in to explain the difference between these two problems, between peat, which is high in copper, and uh, serpentine, which is high in cobalt, of course, among things like chromium and nickel and things like that. It's always been the niggling problem, but I think we can actually solve that niggling problem now. Okay. I better put these in case we want some nice screenshots or anything. It always helps, you know, to suck people in. Okay, over and out, bye.